Hey guys, how's it going? So right now I'm standing in the very far back corner of the new property. Actually in the shade of our one maple tree over here. Thought I would stand in the only piece of shade we have out here. Check this out. Little, you gotta start somewhere, right? Yeah, just, you know, you can just kind of huddle up right here. It's nice. Comfortable. Yeah, it's comfy. It's 100 degrees out here today. <laughs> anyway, what we're doing out here today is probably not gonna be, I hope it's interesting to watch. There's not gonna be a whole lot to show like right away from what we're doing, but we're gonna start staking out the area where we want our compost bin system, where we're gonna have extra storage, where we're gonna have our cut flower garden, hopefully next year. Um, also, we're going to be staking out where we want some grass pathways and things like that. So we thought you guys might like to see kind of our process for doing that, um, as well as maybe like catching a glimpse of the vision of what we're trying to attain out, attain out here. And this is what we're starting with. <laughs> it actually, it, it doesn't look bad compared to what it did. Like before it was just pasture. I don't know. I would say that maybe it looked better, Aaron. Just having grass and stuff. Yeah, but it was too bumpy. All the gophers, they had really done their work. Yeah, so we really did, we tilled it once. Aaron tilled the whole thing, uh, which did churn up some weed seeds, but they were, I mean, it was already thick with stuff yeah, like that exactly. anyway so it doesn't matter um, and so we got it pretty much like smoothed out it's a little bumpy still um, but it's cleaned it up a bit to where we can kind of like we got the gravel lane put in which is looking really good Let me back up here so you can see the corner with the red point and all along the fence line with the arms so like this section looks nice and tidy uh, and this is the corner where we want to be able to access the compost system from this side we're gonna build a um, freestanding fence kind of a thing and that will be the back of the compost system as well as extra storage for our tractor implements and extra bags of soil and mulch um, and so there will be two sides to it like one on this side and then the fence will run and then one on this side and then we'll be able to access all the stuff from back here on the lane so we need to measure out how much space we need for that and then on the other side of that fence that's where the fruit trees will be a greenhouse or a structure of some kind and then our cut flower garden that way. And this is pretty much all we're gonna be using today. We've got string. Uh, did you bring a, a tape measure, the big one? Nope. Gotta go get it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so string, something to cut the string with, a bunch of stakes, a mallet to pound the stakes in, and then we'll go get our uh, tape measure. So yeah. let's go get that real quick. Okay. Got it. Aaron actually came out here, uh, I don't know, a week or two ago, and based off of one of my drawings, he started putting stakes in the ground. We're gonna go ahead and remeasure um, just to make sure. But what we're thinking, like this is the, I think the back of the fence, right Aaron? Like this is where the fence starts yep. right here. And then the other one goes out 105 feet from here. So all of this stuff essentially would be moved up and hiding behind a six foot fence section which would give us plenty of room and I don't I honestly think this might be too much room Aaron I don't know what your what your opinion is because how big do you want your compost system to be this is going to be kind of Aaron's pet project yeah I I think that we have an, a lot of room to play with mm -hmm. and I don't want to neck it down too hard sure so I think if you go from this corner and go out like how how deep do you think the compost thing will be eight feet is that what you had written Six up? Six to eight feet. Uh huh. Somewhere, somewhere in that area. It's still a, a tremendous it's still amount of space. A lot of room, but I feel like getting the tractor in and out, having mm -hmm. plenty of room, and not feeling like too you're tight. Not feeling yeah. like too tight. I think that'd be really nice. Okay, I'm good with that. So we'll remeasure. We'll just make sure that we'll measure to that fence, and then we'll measure over um, to the corner, and then we'll go ahead and measure from this stake straight over to this fence to make sure that we've got the proper distance. Um, so then we have 35 feet from this stake to the next stake. And this section will have a small fence. <laughs> this is so hard um, to explain. In fact, at the end of this video, I think what we'll do is we'll get the drone up. People will probably just skip right to the end of this video. <laughs> I will put the drone up and I will color in uh, like loosely what we're planning on doing. Um, so you can kind of get an overhead idea of the basic design layout. It's gonna be pretty simple. We're gonna make sure this cut flower garden, it's gonna have nice wide 15 foot grass paths through the center aisles, but it's essentially gonna be the same kind of setup as we currently have, just a tiny bit smaller, um, where there will be four 
big rectangles that we can get our tractor in so that we can work manure into the soil and do that sort of thing. We wanna make sure that everything is a, as accessible as possible. So in this section right back here, this 35 feet, there will be enough room for two, four, six, eight, ten fruit trees and a structure. We haven't decided what kind of structure, but it might be a good like fancy greenhouse. Maybe, maybe not. Um, Maybe it'll just be like one of those pre-built sheds for a little yeah, while, <laughs> possibly. Um, but I want some kind of structure. It doesn't have to be permanent or anything like that. But something where I can keep supplies and somewhere I could put a table and chairs like to do flower arrangement, arranging and things like that. And then after that 35 feet, so that's where that stake is, there's a 15 foot grass path that will go in front of that whole section and it will lead out into more flower beds beyond the cut flower garden. And this is the corner where our very first rectangle starts. So it's gonna go 45 feet that way and it'll be 70 feet long. So the next stake is over here. Hold on, gotta make the trek. Don't we have a lovely crop of weeds? So that's the end of the first rectangle, another 15 foot walkway that'll be grass, and then another section that's 70 feet by 45 feet. And at this point, I don't think we're planning on putting any sort of fencing around the main part of the cut flower garden because we might adjust the size. Like we might get it in and think, you know what? This isn't sustainable for long term. We want to make it a little smaller or whatever the case may be. It would be nice not to permanent everything up. Is that how you say it? Yeah. <laughs> we don't want it to be so firm that we can't um, adjust if we want to or need to. You know what? I just threw a lot of information at you guys without really being able to show you something. So let me, I'll show you my sketch right here. It's very rough, but let me show you kind of a basic idea. Okay. So this is the exterior fence right here. This is where I'm st standing right now in the shade of the red point. This is the gravel lane. This is all gravel here. This is the fence. We're gonna put extra pallets right back in here. This is the composting system. Right here for that 35 foot section, so it's 35 feet deep, 105 wide. This is where we put all the fruit trees. And there will be a small picket fence that comes down off of this taller fence that's hiding all of this stuff back here so that it's not like an abrupt ending. This is gonna be flower beds, so you actually won't even see any of this side stuff at all. This is all trees and evergreens and stuff. There's a 15 foot walkway. There's our greenhouse, 15 feet, 15 feet. There will be a large water feature, most likely. And then we're gonna do little cutouts here, just keeping it very simple and easy to get the tractor around and do four benches with some containers. And then all of this will be grass. It'll be a 15 foot grass here, 15 foot grass, 15 foot grass so that we have easy access to each one of these rectangles. This is actually what we currently have in terms of measurements. What I'm gardening in right now, our temporary cut flower garden. They're 48 feet wide and 80 feet long. So I did make them a tiny bit smaller in that they're 45 by 70, but not much smaller. Do you have any other things you wanna add? Nope, I think we should get started staking. Oh my goodness, it's so hot out here. I mean, it's better than digging holes when it's 100 degrees. I don't like precision work of any <laughs> kind. Uh -uh, nope. That's why I like to draw things out, not to scale. <laughs> so that was my loose drawing, and then we will still do the drone thing and kind of color in so you can see a kind of more real picture of what it might end up looking like. All right, let's get after it. All right, let's do it. Well, we're both really hot and we got some basic measurements of what we have going and on paper because I don't think do things to scale everything fit beautifully but now that we have this space all marked out it's way too big um, because we have some other plans for some big things in this whole big square as a whole and we want to make sure that everything fits in well so doing this was a really good idea it's always a good idea to put some stakes in the ground Right, Aaron? Yes. <laughs> Before you start putting in sprinkler systems and all Maybe that sort of thing. Maybe not when it's 100 degrees. Yeah, not when it's 100. We probably should have done this this morning or tonight, but 
either way we're gonna go inside to kind of we're gonna get on Google Earth look at an overhead and I'm gonna play around with my drawing just a little bit um, that way I'll have something more accurate to show you guys the other reason why we wanted to come out here and get this staked out is that I just bought three big blue spruces yesterday <laughs> at the garden center couldn't help myself and they get kind of big and I got to make sure I'm placing them right so I've got to make sure my measurements are proper so we're gonna head in oh and look at that there they are those are hoops I beautiful all right guys it's clearly a new day I'm so glad that we took the time even though it was so hot to go out there and walk the space and get some really precise measurements of the area because what happens is and I don't know if you guys should like me but when you are dream sketching things like I use approximate measurements but nothing like exactly precise so I tend to, to dream big and maybe like visualize things that maybe that space can't quite handle so what I end up running into is things running into each other and that's what was happening we got it all staked out and the end of the flower garden was going to be running right into the area where our new driveway is going to be running through the property so anyway we had to kind of scale it back a little bit what we did is we came inside i spent a couple hours just really like really thinking through things aaron and i discussed all of our priorities because you know he has things he's excited about for this property I have things that I'm excited about, so really to kind of regroup because we've been talking about this. I mean, you guys know we started talking with our neighbors about buying this property right after Benjamin was born. So this has been like two and a half years in the making and a lot of things happen. A lot of your ideas change, a lot of your plans evolve through that amount of time. Um, so it's really good to sit back down and regroup before we start putting permanent things in place out there. So I did retool my sketch and I'll just show it to you. It's not like wildly different. I just made things a little bit more scaled down to the proper size. Um, and then we also determined that we want a second high tunnel out there. You know, we have that one high tunnel in our new cut flower garden area. We're gonna collapse that and put it somewhere else but I think we could really use a second one. It's been so nice to have that. And I don't really want those to be super visible all the time either, so that's something to consider. So anyway, let me show you kind of the morphed sketch. It looks quite similar to the other one. And then Aaron went ahead and took the drone up because the Google Earth image is quite dated. We've done a lot to this property in a short amount of time, so it was actually more accurate to see an overhead drone shot. And then I colored in the same plan I'm just about to show you that sketched I colored it in just to show you a, a different perspective. That helps me out anyway. So here's the new sketch. The only thing that really changed, you guys, is I um, eliminated like two feet from this area back here. And I made the rectangles for the cut flower garden a little bit smaller, like they're five feet smaller on each side. I actually, when I started to sketch this out, I eliminated one whole row of fruit trees because I thought, well, I mean, I don't really need that extra work, but then Aaron, and I did not expect this, Aaron was really excited about all those fruit trees. Um, and I didn't realize that, so I put that back in. And then we decided to put high tunnels here. And all of this is still very loose. These might move here because there is a little bit more space over here to deal with. But keep in mind that each one of these squares is worth 20 feet. So, I mean, this is a pretty significant amount of space. And then this is the second image I wanted to show you because for me, it helps to see everything in relation to everything else. So basically just taking this and plunking it right here. So this is the new property. This is our current property. Um, so our house is here, our barn back there, and then our lane currently, this is how we access our house. It comes down here and goes around and it currently swings back around the front of our house. But you can see the new driveway, like how we wanna kind of retool that. But let me set the camera up. I've got my little markup pen here so I can just kind of explain maybe a little bit more detail. So the first thing which we actually have ordered are 20 trees that we're gonna line the um, main lane of our driveway with. And our neighbors have asked, the ones that live down this way, <laughs> they've asked us if we will continue the maple trees down their lane as well. So I ordered six more so that we can continue that on. And we'll have these on this side underplanted with grass, probably on this side as well. I think it'll be a really welcoming look. And they put on a beautiful show in the fall. And then you can see, and I'm not sure how this is gonna work, but like in this area right here, we have, you know, the little picket fence that runs right here. We've got, there's the big blue spruce tree. And then there's driveway that's gonna be taken out that's right in here. And so we want to extend the grass that's here now out into this area so that it makes this property look like it's one property and not something that's broken up by fencing and driveways and all of that. 
that was the reason why we want to bring the driveway through here. And I think it'll be a really pretty look. I think driving in and looking across this expanse of beautiful lawn with, there will be flower beds, you guys. Like there will be, this is just so incredibly basic, but there will be flower beds. I don't know how they'll look exactly, but we'll have islands with beautiful plantings, big shade trees. Erin kind of wants to keep, let me get rid of some of these lines I've drawn. Erin kind of wants to keep a big swath of grass, swatch, swath area of grass free right in the center because he wants Benjamin and him to be able to play soccer and football and all that sort of thing. So I don't know if we'll actually end up with trees right in the center here. We'll probably start with the borders first and get those all planted up. And then we'll see how we actually even use this space. We might end up doing a water feature in here. I'm not sure yet. Um, we might have a great big water feature over here that spans both sections. We haven't decided, but we've got time. And then this area right here, we probably won't have any grass, but we do want to have some nice walking paths, whether or not they're grass, brick, gravel, who knows at this point. Um, but all of this space will be planted with evergreens, trees, shrubs, beautiful stuff, and it'll be so thickly planted you probably won't even be able to see this stuff over here, which is good because this is kind of our storage area here. And then this path right here, you can see it comes into where the grass is that goes right in front of the greenhouse. There will also be opening here to get in and here, and then of course over here from the service road. So you'll be able to access, access the space from any side, really. And then this area right here, again, will have a nice pathway. It'll probably be wide enough to get the gator through. Um, so we'll probably do, do like fairly significant 10 foot walkways. There are the high tunnels right here. And then all of this will be planted with stuff, trees and evergreens again. Um, just kind of a nice block because there will be homes here. I think, I think this is actually one big lot right here. I could be wrong. They did these kind of smaller, but I think one person owns this giant lot. Anyway, um, I want to have some big trees and stuff so we don't see that. And then um, you can see our maple trees that Aaron planted right there. And this is parking, which is perfect because there's an access gate right here. And we'll just keep that nice and open. And then here we will have a flower bed. And then you can see the brick walkway that's on our west side right here. I'm not sure if we'll retool it and bring it in to this area somehow or if we'll let it just continue to curve how it is now and meet our driveway. There are a lot of details yet to be worked out. But I hope that gives you kind of a different perspective and kind of an idea of what we're thinking. Uh, and again, this is extremely basic, very preliminary, and very subject to change at this point. Um, like all of the little circles, I have no idea what I'm going to plant exactly, except for I know I have three blue spruce trees, and I do have five Corinthian lindens I can start planting in places. But, you know, I'm kind of a do-it-as-you-go kind of a person. And I think that's actually a little bit hard for Aaron because I think he would like to have everything kind of sketched out like kind of know what plants were going where and then like start start in but I'm so like I've got to see it and I've got to visualize it and I've got to see it at the garden center and think that is the perfect plant for that spot and that's just how I operate I've just never been a big one on doing exact plans like I can put things down like this and say well I kind of want the cut flower garden to be here and maybe a grouping of trees here but until I start seeing it evolve that's why I'm so slow at it I, I don't know, I just don't feel, I don't like the process as much. I feel like it's almost done. Like if you have a plan with everything written down, it's like, well, it's all, all done. We just gotta put it into place. And it's not as, I don't know. I feel like it's more permanent almost. I feel like I don't have the ability to change my mind along the way a little bit. Like with the West Side Garden here, I love that we went slow with the planting and that I tried some annuals out um, to try out the kind of the whole moon garden concept because I found out that I don't really care for that in that large of a space and in full sun. I think I need to do moon garden in a very much smaller space in the shade. I think I would like it so much more. Um, but I don't know those things until I try them out. So for me, uh, it's just best to kind of move slow and add things as I feel like it's right. But when we are setting out to, you know, put in a greenhouse and put in fruit trees and those uh, like kind of permanent things, you kind of need to know basically where they're gonna go. And so I think that this is gonna help us get started and we are going to probably be tackling 
some of it this fall. So anyways, that's it for today's video. We just thought we would bring you along and kind of show you our thought process and show you what we do as we are tackling a new area. And it's always interesting because you know, you're mixing a couple of different um, approaches and a couple of different opinions. And uh, we always end up coming up with something that we both like. Um, like eventually I will win Aaron over on something or he'll win me over on something. And we always end up with something that we really like. So, I mean, I think we're fortunate there. Um, but it's just really, it's fun. It's a fun thing to dream about and know that we're gonna probably get going. Uh, because like I'm looking out at the cut flower garden now and we had a horrible windstorm, you guys, that just knocked my corn down flat. I staked it all up. But I think, I was out there looking last night and I think having the cut flower garden where I will probably grow corn still, um, in the new spot, I think it will be blocked from the worst of the wind by the houses that are right there. I'm hopeful anyway. Um, yeah because right now they're out in the middle of nowhere. So I think it's gonna be a good change to get everything shifted over as soon as possible and not garden this space next year. Anyway, I could probably chat all day long about all the little details and things, but I'm gonna end the video now. I really appreciate you guys watching it. I hope that it was helpful or <laughs> inspiring or, or something, I don't know. Anyway, informational, I guess. There's Russell. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video, bye.